12 races across eight months have all been building up to this moment. This is the championship decider. This is Formula E. What's up street racers? I'm Oliver Rowland and for one show only, I'm gonna be your host. So we're here in New York City for the last race of the season. Let's see what's coming up. Formula E's expert commentators give us their opinion on the final two races in New York. What happened in yesterday's race? <laughs> everything. I mean, really everything. It was one of the craziest races I've ever seen. Our host, Oliver Rowland, gets a sustainable makeover for his race suit. All of my work is made with scrap material. That's what makes it sustainable. We'll get a sneak peek of the brand new car for the groundbreaking Extreme E racing series. It's a beast, an electric beast. And of course, there's all the action from the final race of the season. Who will be crowned champion? Stay tuned to find out. But before we see how the season finishes, let's take a look at how we got to where we are. Coming into the final race in New York, the second of a tough doubleheader weekend, there are four drivers who can still win the championship. Reigning champion, flying Frenchman, jean eric Verne's defense of his title started pretty well with a podium finish in the opening race of the season. However, there was trouble ahead. A string of uncharacteristically poor qualifying performances and mechanical issues meant that by the fifth round in Hong Kong, Jeff was only 11th in the Drivers' Championship. Guys broke guys. This is a joke. A win on his team's home soil in Sanya kick-started his season, claiming three podium finishes, including two wins in the next five races. Vern wins for the second time this season in Formula E! Coming into the final weekend, Jeff had the potential to secure the championship in the first New York e Prix, but an incident-filled race meant the title is still to be decided. And Jean-Eric Vern will not score any points! Jeff's closest challenger is Lucas de Grassi. The Brazilians' campaign has been full of ups and downs. Two race wins, two fastest laps, and another podium finish showed his pace. The Grassi <laughs> wins! <laughs> However, he scored zero points in four rounds. Slam, bam, and that's the Grassi out! Including a disappointing retirement in Monaco. The first half of Sebastian Buemi's season was disappointing by his usual standards. Buemi's in the wall, Burns in the lead! Including two retirements and a 21st place finish. Buemi out of the race for Nissan. After a poor start, he's finished the year in form, scoring three successive podiums that culminated in breaking his two-year winless streak last time out in the first of the two race finale in New York. And Sebastian Buemi with his first win of the season. Jaguar Racing's Mitch Evans scored consistent points in the first seven races, finishing with his and Jaguar's first ever Formula E win in Rome. Mitch Evans through the final corner to win the Rome E for Jaguar. The second half of his campaign was more turbulent, but second place finishes in rounds 11 and 12 have ensured he's still in the fight. Coming into this final race, jean eric Verne still has a commanding lead of 22 points over Lucas de Grassi. Mitch Evans would have to win the race and get the extra point for fastest lap to take the top spot, and Buemi has an even tougher task of not only winning the race, but also getting the three bonus points for scoring pole position. We'll see which of our contenders seals the title later in the show. But first, let's find out what our commentators, Jack Nichols and Dario Franchitti, think of the situation after the penultimate race of the season. So we're here in the pit lane ahead of the season finale of ABB FIA Formula E. Dario Franchitti is alongside me. Dario, in 10 seconds, what happened in yesterday's race? <laughs> everything. I mean, really everything. It was one of the craziest races I've ever seen. The upshot is, the championship is a lot closer today, going into the finale. Lucas Degrassi scored points, John Eric Byrne did not, but taken out really in two accidents that weren't of his making. Completely close on me on the outside and I had no grip. Uh, just an incredible, <laughs> crazy race from back to front. So, coming into this final race... Oh yeah, and Sebastian Buemi won. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> We've got Buemi, Mitch Evans, Lucas Degrassi and Jean-Eric Byrne in it. Realistically, you have to say, 
it's going to be straightforward for Vern to wrap it up. But we said that yesterday. I did. I mean, you kind of give me a hard time for yeah. on Friday saying, ah, it's done. And it just showed it's far from done. And the same could happen again today. Mitch Evans and Sebastian Buemi, for me, are big surprises that they're suddenly involved in the title fight. OK, Mitch it was up there in the top five in the standings coming into the weekend. But you never realistically looked at him as, as a title contender coming into New York, right? No, not really as a title contender. You know, he's, he was third before, but he was, that, the gap was uh, seemed insurmountable. And obviously, that win in Rome, they became race-winning contenders. Buemi, mm -hmm. there was this point in, early in the season, he had three DNFs in three races. Yeah. Bit by bit, you've watched him kind of climb the championship. You've watched Nissan climbing the team's championship as well. Uh, and the pace yesterday, again, was, was fantastic. Yes, Mick! Yes! So what do you see happening today? Is it, is it, <laughs> chuck that one at you. Jack, I don't know. If anything proved anything, we do not know. It's got a last day of school feeling about it. Yesterday had a last day of school yeah. feeling about it. People were just crashing into each other all the time. They were racing so hard against each other. There was a lot of, of touching, a bit of damage. And I see today being more of that. There's some people with absolutely nothing to lose, and there's some people with a lot to lose. You spoke to Jean-Eric Vern last night. How was he? Remarkably chilled. Really? He was, he was relaxed. When I say relaxed, he wasn't stressed. Yeah. You never relax when you're going for a championship, yeah. but he was focused. He knew what he had to do. I, I think he's in a good sort of space mentally. Lucas Degrassi is in full hunter killer mode. You can <laughs> see him, he's just ready to do it. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great showdown. Well, that was yesterday. That was the penultimate race of the season. Now it's all on the line. Who will become the season five Formula E champion? As the Formula E season heads towards its end, another brand new all-electric racing series made a step forward towards its very first start. Extreme E will be the first electric off-road championship. Its mission to showcase electric vehicle technology and raise awareness of critical environmental issues, staging rallies on terrain already damaged by human activity. The first launch of the car that will compete was held at the prestigious Goodwood Festival of Speed in the UK. Three, two, one. We go to the most extreme locations in the planet. We go with these electric SUVs to showcase that they can work anywhere, on the snow, on the rocks, on the desert. We also raise awareness about what's going on in those places in the world that are really under a lot of stress deforestation, melting of the ice caps, a lot of challenges linked to even plastic in the oceans. We had a lot of fun doing this car. Uh, it's very different from a Formula E, and um, it was very challenging not knowing where the car would go. I mean, when you talk about Himalayas and Sahara's uh, green forest, it's, it's really a very demanding terrain, and we had to put all our ideas together and look at existing cars, let's say, to see the, what would be the proper size. And uh, when, when you look at it like that, I think we, we quite achieved that. It's clean, it's environmental, whatever you want, but it's a car race, a real car race. And some of the best drivers in the world, we hope, will be racing these cars in the most incredible locations. It's a beast, an electric beast. It's an incredible looking machine, and we can't wait to see it in action when the series kicks off in 2021, traveling to far-flung places. But for now, let's head back to the USA. The Big Apple, the city that never sleeps, New York is known by many names, but this weekend, it's the home of electric street racing. One of the world's busiest and densest population centers, the city is aiming to blaze a trail in the US with high sustainability targets, including 100% renewable energy use by 2040 and over 1 million electric cars by 2025. It has the highest rate of public transport use in the country. And it's not only the USA's most walkable city, but the most energy efficient too. By 2030, New York wants to be the biggest clean city in the US. And as the country's economic powerhouse, it certainly has the means to be leading the charge. One change we can all make to step towards a more sustainable future is with what we wear. So we challenged New York fashion guru Daniel Silverstein to bring his own special brand of sustainable design to the Formula E grid. My name is Daniel. I'm the founder of Zero Waste Daniel, a sustainable clothing company that makes clothes and textile art out of fabric scraps. 
I think in some form I've been doing this my entire life. I started working with scrap material when I was a little kid and when I studied design in college I saw that we were throwing things away in big bins the way I would buy them when I was a kid and saw so much potential in all the waste that was coming out of this industry and decided to do something with it. I mean how incredible is it to take discarded scrap material and hand sewing that's been going on for centuries and then putting it into the most modern, futuristic, sustainable race car on earth. When I got the suit in the mail, I, I was so surprised by the weight and how many layers, and the construction of it is top notch. I mean, it's just beautifully made. All I wanted to do was add on top of it. That's one of my favorite parts. We're taking this ancient craft, I mean, patchwork especially is as old as time and bringing it into the futuristic arena of electric car racing. I want my clothing to speak. I want it to say things like, I believe in sustainability, but also communicate that they're fun, that they are making sustainability cool. Because to sit here and say, well, you shouldn't do this, and you should consume like that, and you should you know, be this way is not fun, but to say it could be this amazing, it is this exciting, it is so cool, it's actually something you want to be a part of. And I think the electric car is a really great example of something like that. Like you don't have to give up the pastime of enjoying a race, you can do it in a futuristic way. I'm super proud of this design, super excited about the suit. I've never made anything like this, and I, I can't wait for everyone to see it. Hey. Hi. Daniel, nice to meet you. How are you? How's, How's it going? So yeah, this is the, the garage. Um, this, this is your my, car. My car's this one. Then you've got the, the steering wheel, which is uh, it's pretty complex. You know, we've got all sorts of different toggles and, and even all these on the back. So we're constantly during the race playing with all that sort of stuff, and it's probably, one of the most interesting things on the car, to be honest, and, and it's something that we have to learn and manage. And do you have like a coach on your... Yeah, so we have an engineer back here who tells us everything. So much to think about, like yeah. while you're going, how many miles an hour? I think now we do like 270 kilometers per hour, which is like, you know, 160 miles an hour or something, 170 miles an hour. I would be very nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to check out the suit? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. All of my work is made with scrap material. That's okay. what makes it sustainable. How long did it take covers. you to do this? A couple of days. That's nice. It's yours if you want to try it on. Yeah, let's try it on. Let's do it. Maybe I can race it this weekend. All right, it looks cool. Not too bad, is it? It's super cool to see it in real life, and I usually don't do stuff that's quite this loud and colorful, so it's very cool to see it all happening. Thank you very much. Jenny. It's my pleasure. I might give it a go. Incredible to see what can be done with some scrap material and an eye for fashion. Enough of that though, it's time to go racing. Qualifying was extremely important for all the drivers as usual, but none more so than Sebastian Buemi, who needed to make it through the Super Pole, then go fastest, which would secure three bonus points and keep his championship hopes alive. Starting from the notoriously difficult Group 1, Buemi set a quick time, but then had to sit and wait for the rest of the drivers to set their times. Championship leader jean eric Verne and second place Lucas Degrassi both struggled for pace, qualifying in 12th and 11th respectively. Buemi was still in the running for the Super Pole shootout with just Gary Paffett to run. However, he was held up by the neo of Tom Dillman, ensuring that Buemi would scrape through. Our host Oliver Rowland just missed out on the top six Super Pole, qualifying in seventh place. Buemi was first up and set a blistering time before having to leave his championship hopes to fate as the other drivers took to the track. Sam Bird was next out and several lockups on his lap meant he only went fourth fastest. Daniel Abt also couldn't beat Buemi as he qualified sixth. HWA's Stoffel Van Dorn could only do enough to set the fifth fastest time. Envision Virgin's Robin Frines was on the warpath with a stunning lap on the limit. Robin Frines goes quickest and Sebastian Buemi is out of championship contention. 
Last, but by no means least, BMW's Alexander Sims went even quicker than France, taking his first pole position of the season and BMW's first since round one. Yes, good job, babe. Alexander Sims takes pole for BMW. Once qualifying was done, it was time to take to the track for the very last time in season five. We caught up with our host on the grid. Hi guys, so last race of the season. Uh, it's been a pretty long year. Um, my rookie season, I've learned a lot, but here we are in New York for the, for the last race and we're starting seventh. So, you know, who knows? Uh, we'll try and fight for the podium today and, uh, and see how we come out. There was tension in the air as the drivers prepared to go to battle one final time. Sweltering temperatures and the weight of expectations only added to the pressure. Jean-Eric Ver needed to finish sixth or higher to guarantee him the title. Nothing but a win would do for Lucas Degrassi or Mitch Evans. We've got a race for the championship. We've got a race for the race win. The front row of the grid is Alexander Sims and Robin Freitz in the Envision Virgin Racing Team. Championship leader Jean-Eric Verne is in 12th place. His title rivals Degrassi and Evans are in 11th and 8th respectively. And we go green in New York City and it's a very good start from Buemi. Gets up alongside, round the outside and he's up into second place because he started on that cleaner side of the grid. Van Dorn's going in very, very deep. Robin Freitz tries to stay with him. Verne looks like he's safely through the first corner. We're on board with the championship leader now. Oh, he gets a little bit of a nudge coming into turn two. He tries to fight that off and go up the inside of Eduardo Mortara, but safely through the first couple of corners there, Verne, and he might even be up into 11th place by the time they get down to turn six here. Yeah, he's on the, on the clean part of the track. He did a very smart thing. He kind of backed off a bit, moved on to the clean part of the track. So he turns two and three as he locks up, goes around the outside, oh, oh. right behind him. Another incident with a dragon. Lopez spun around again. And you can see Lotter in the background. Is he under attack? Has he got some damage to the car? That's Turby going up the inside of Lotter. And De Costa trying to get involved too. But he needs to be careful not to get fed into the wall there, Lotter. Battle for second place. Sims is having to defend now from Sebastian Buemi behind. Sam Berg lagging in fourth. Daniel Apt in fifth. Mitch Evans in sixth. Lotterer into the pits. It's all very well, Diaz to Cheetah running into trouble, but Audi need a big, big points haul if they are going to overturn them in the team's championship. With Audi drivers apt in seventh and Degrassi running in tenth, the team's title was still safely with Diaz to Cheetah, who had Jeff still holding on to the driver's championship despite sitting in 11th. Here comes Oliver Owen, Sam Bird defending. Very aggressive driver, rookie this season, but he hasn't been afraid to mix it up with anybody. Good stuff, mate. Cheers, mate. And now, Roland is attacking Van Dorn. Big lockup into turn one. Position in the HWA ahead of Roland. Big crack on the front of Roland's car. Look at him come. Here, Roland, because he's got the attack mode, he's got more straight line speed. Looks to the outside. Evans trying to get past Apt to the inside. Doing a good job, mate. Paffin has lost out to Degrassi and Verne. Both Degrassi and Jean-Eric Verne have got past, so Verne is now up into the points. And still as it stands, would wrap up the Season 5 Championship, becoming the first ever double winner in ABB FIA Formula E history. You're running with 2% more energy than the others. Here comes Abt, side by side with Roland. Roland comes across to cover him off. <laughs> Roland is not going to be an easy person to pass. Oh, it's the dummy from Frights. He's, he's offline, he's on the dirty part of the track. But he got it oh. stopped. Brilliant move from the man from Maastricht. Up as the attack mode behind. Daniel Apt on Roland. Gets it done, goes in a little deep, but manages to get it stopped. So that's Apt now up into fifth place. He's doing a good job here, Daniel Apt in the Audi. Mitch Evans through up into sixth place. Roland drops down to seventh. Everything feels all right, mate. Yeah, all good, mate. Degrassi up the inside of Van Dorn on the fan boost. And that is eighth place taken away. Robin Fry's going for the lead. Being squeezed and squeezed by Sims and the move is made. Robin Fry forces his way into first place. Sims drops down to second. That was a proper one, good job, good job. Coming into the final laps, Jeff's title was looking secure with Degrassi and Evans in sixth and seventh. Only a win from them could take it away. The Diaz de Cheetah are a lap away from a double championship victory. 
Evans has a problem. Mitch Evans, yeah. Degrass is up the inside. Degrass oh. is in the wall. Evans is in the wall. But Robin Freitz out of the final corner to take the checker flag and to take the victory in New York City. But here comes John Eric Van out of the final corner now. And he is a two times Formula E okay. champion. <laughs> Jeff, we have done it again. We have done it again. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Jeff. We have done it again. Drivers champions and teams champions, Diaz to Cheetah and jean eric Van. Incredible. So it was Frines who crossed the line in first place. But the day belonged to jean eric Van and Diaz to Cheetah as they secured both the drivers and the team's championships. John Eric Vern is now the first driver ever to hold two drivers' titles. Sebastian Buemi's late charge up the rankings sees him finish in second overall. Lucas Degrassi held on to third place in the championship despite his last minute crash with Mitch Evans, who drops to fifth place behind race winner Robin Fries. In the team standings, Diaz Tachito won with a margin of 19 points over Audi, despite strong performances from the German team in the last few races. Robin Freyne's win means Envision Virgin Racing took third place from Nissan Edams by just one point. A slightly disappointing end to the season for our host. Yes, obviously just finished up the race in New York. It was uh, pretty hot as you can see, um, but not a bad race. You know, we. We made our way up to fifth and then we dropped back with a bit of a bad attack mode strategy but in the end you know we managed to come back and finish sixth which is uh, some good points. Um, of course a little bit disappointed we missed third in the team's championship uh, which is what we were pushing for by one point but that was great. Um, so yeah thanks for tuning in and we'll see you all soon. That's nearly all we got time for but before we go let's take a look at what's been happening on social media. Andre Lauderer posted this pic announcing that he'll be driving for Porsche next season. Formula E started the one-year countdown to the London E Prix with a special livery launch. And finally, Jeff sent a message to the fans who supported him to his double championship win. Hi guys, so we're here on Sunday night in New York. We've done it. Uh, it's not an easy weekend at all, but uh, you know I'm so proud of, uh, of those guys, of the work they've done because they uh, simply to be the best this year. And, uh, I'll give it a week before we start working again for next season and uh, try to win some more. But uh, thank you all for your support. You've been amazing. Ta-ta. So the Formula E season is over, but that doesn't mean the party is going to stop. We've got plenty more to come on Street Racers, giving you the inside track on the world of Formula E and beyond. Mm -hmm.